We on TV? Alright, check it out. Yeah. 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 It won't be like a traditional uh, unveiling of a, of a sculpture where there it is and, and it's beautiful and we can, you know, it will simply be a framework until art is done on it. That thingy, I forgot what it's called, is going to be in front of YouthLink. YouthLink is a drop-in center for homeless youth, and it's really important that they're able to find out. A lot of them don't have cell phones to call when they're on their way. Look, at there's downtown. Mm -hmm. There's this huge billboard right across the way. There's all this stuff, and then, so we're building a sign. That this could be the kind of the, the iconic symbol for the youth, and it could be the place that they could look towards from downtown Minneapolis and it could be identifying this refuge for them. The idea here is to make a piece of sculpture that's also kind of a sign for the building. Randy received a grant through Forecast Republic Art uh, via the McKnight Foundation to create a large-scale public artwork at the Youth Opportunity Center at YouthLink. Uh, we support young people experiencing homelessness aged 16 to 23 here. And it's a first step to finding uh, really a change in their trajectory from homelessness to more stability. I was homeless and, you know, not going to say helpless, but it would have been a lot harder if you can not help me out a lot. They helped me out a lot. They do a lot of stuff for me. He really understands the journey that youth that are in precarious situations take. He understands that their life is transitory, that, that art is also transitory. This sculpture um, is really kind of an experiment. As the youth change, that this, this art should change and that you should have a voice in that. I'm working with Culture Club Collaborative with uh, youth and the staff to create a, uh, a artwork, a public artwork, that kind of bridges uh, the permanent and the temporary aspects of sculpture. Look, look. We're working on a sculpture project that we've been collaborating with Randy Walker for, I bet, almost two years we've been in conversation about this. They've seen drawings, they've seen scale models, uh, renderings, and so we walked into Hans' studio and here's this huge steel structure. We are building now the bottom half of this large modular frame. And this is actually the first time I've seen this ever in real life. So I'm as shocked as everyone else. Coming to this place, watching these people's well. Did I say that really well? What? Hans is a master metal worker. It's a little larger than I'm usually getting into. Uh, hey, hey, hey. I just welded a piece of, I think that's metal. Jeff, is that metal? Hey, look, hey, hey, yo, yo, yo. We're using wire feed, some metal in her gas welding. So I got to go on and weld. Culture Club is an arts program for youth 16 to 23 who are who have experienced homelessness. Culture Club does things like go to art museums, uh, plays, we make our own art. It was like all bubbly and hot, like that. I bring it to your shop, and we're chilling up in the workshop. I'm always apprehensive when things start turning real, but uh, it's exciting too. I work with a lot of fibrous materials, rope, string, cable, and I use them in conjunction with frameworks, with more solid structures. And then this is where the sculpture is going to sit, kind of parallel to that wall. We build this uh, kind of landscape retaining wall that will be filled with gravel, and the gravel will cover the concrete footing. Yeah. Hans has got the sculpture to a point where uh, it's almost ready to be delivered. It's a very simple shape, but to actually make it precise is a lot of work. I'm just blown away by the job he's done. The difference between it on paper and it in real life is always, uh, it's always surprising. The frame has been completed. It's in two pieces, 
And the plan, as of right now, is that on next Tuesday, we'll, we will try to install this. Uh, yeah. So we're here at the site, and uh, today is the installation. And uh, now it's a matter of uh, transporting the frame over there and, and bolting it down and uh, putting the two sections together, which is more complicated than it sounds. Uh, yeah. The next step will be to uh, lift the first section okay. off the truck, position it over the footings, and then they, this thing will be bolted to the footings. After that, the second piece will be lifted off the truck, positioned over the first piece, and then Hans, who's the fabricator, he built it, he's actually going to weld it. That day. That day. Okay. Field weld it together. Yeah. And once that's in place, then the first installation will occur, the first art installation, which will be a fiber-based installation. Randy's built this structure with the idea that uh, every quarter or six months we would install a new artwork onto it and Randy's installing the first artwork onto it with a group of young people. Now you guys are super important because this is the first thing, the first installation. I would like to do something starting off that is kind of kind of my design but not really a design. There's there's total freedom in it. We are like the initiators, the first installation. I love it at Youflink and I just feel kind of honored to symbolize it somehow by uh, designing a sign. We need some string, matter of fact, replace it. I need some yarn. Oh. I started off with uh, using thread, just sewing thread and wrapping found objects. Because we're just oh. experimenting with hey, some hey, yarn and seeing kind of how we might attach the yarn and weave it and stuff like that. I think I'm just going to do this diagonal thing for a little bit. I'm taking this yarn, putting it through holes and making stuff and then it just looks random. Oh, oh, oh! It's like I saw him do something like this at first and I just like did like a little bit of my own stuff. So now it's like getting like this. I don't know what it's gonna come out to yet, but I'm still trying to see, add some more colors in it or something, see what it could look like. But you can call this art. Haha, <laughs> true, abstract. What I'd like to do is weave through it, right? Not just across the top of it. Wow. And I was intrigued with how I could develop surfaces depending on how much I wrapped or wove and I could fill space with these little lines that were insignificant until I built them up into a density that you could actually see them. You two are out on the street, you know, I think a lot of their adult interactions are with social workers and uh, cops and teachers that maybe don't understand their situation. Uh, and I think to interact with these awesome young people with a creative lens lets us let them define the questions that we're asking instead of us telling them what questions they have to answer. The sign says, art in progress. It's really kind of been me getting to know them, them getting to know me, and doing some activities that are kind of related to this, uh, to this project. We gotta think about where we, where we start and where we're going, otherwise we'll trap ourselves. He has spent time with everyone just getting a sense of the culture here a sense of the youth culture, a sense of belonging, a sense of how important this place is to youth and the safety that it is. And I think that that all is reflected in the piece that he's created here. Yo, like you know how pregnant women, they're pregnant for like nine or 10 months and then the baby finally comes out. We're in labor right now. Yo. I love music, so I think about music when I do it. I got some strings. So tell them what you think. You think rock. So does Couch Club. So for 20 years, Culture Club has connected with youth experiencing homelessness at Youth Link, connecting youth uh, who are out on the street and unaccompanied uh, with professional artists. You rap, you sing, you draw, you 
do stuff like this, you do poetry, you become the culture club. I can go to see plays and we go to art museums and it's a different interpretation of things that I wouldn't have thought of that way. Yo. I love art. I love being uh, with other people. Jeff is awesome, so culture club is like... Uh, a recipe for success. Chilling and do it, I do it just like I does it. Damn, putting the string up just for my cousin. The fiber allows me to kind of keep going and make it denser and denser over time. And yeah, we just started in that corner. And hopefully soon it will extend beyond that corner. And you know this heat wave, heat wave, chilling with Brandon and yes, CJ. Uh, and you know what I do, chilling and we got Jess, homeboy, and Dro. Oh. There are all these frameworks out there everywhere, whether they're spaces uh, in buildings, between buildings, or they're objects, bridges, and there already are existing structures and often there is an underlying structure um, that's, that is not revealed and that's what the fiber allows me to reveal. Uh, uh. Cutting blue string, because blue yeah. is the color of life, if you didn't know. And we're trying to do it in kind of a random pattern, but there are choices in color and, and placement that are actually um, that make it not completely just do whatever you want. There's an initial excitement when you put the first few strands up, then it's kind of overwhelming. That's usually what I experience. There's some uh, great moment there when it actually starts to evolve, that, that structure, that underlying structure. Art gives us a <laughs> opportunity to, uh, as youth workers, as staff, have a shared experience with young people. You know, a lot of them say, well, I don't know how to do that. And I, it's like, well, actually, you kind of make it up as you go. Well, I don't know how to do this. You don't know how to do this. Let's kind of figure this out together. Pretty much the point has been to think about what could this thing be. And the other idea is to make a sculpture, right, that can change. So we could put photographs on it, we could grow something on it, we could put uh, words on it. This is definitely more long term and more interactive, um, more creative as far as like you can do whatever with it. This is our third day doing this. When I do it on my own I think this is really silly, I just do this string and now when I try to show people or I see and I get, I, you know, it's like, well, there is more to this the way I do it than I realized. And I become very controlling, which I have to let go of. You don't really know what the thing is until it's, it's there. It's kind of like no matter how much stuff we put on here and how many directions and colors and whether, it's chaos, but because it's on this framework, it actually will, it'll be cohesive visually. You know, it'll, it'll be, a, it'll work, I think. When we're working with youth here, often they come in with seemingly not very many assets, seemingly with not very many connections, but when they leave, we want them to feel that sense of connection, and we want to see those healthy branches, those healthy connections. Oh, chilling with Brandon, and I'm chilling with Demisa. And then over the days, you know, things kind of get, they build up to a level where, you know, you look at the whole thing and you're like, how could anyone do that? It collects and it gathers and it grows into more, into more of a network. But there's a long time where you look at it and say, oh yeah, that's a lot of string. I, you know, I could have, I could see how somebody might have done. But we want to get to the level where it's crazy. It's like, that's nuts. Like how, how many people and how long did it take to do that? Uh, this sculpture before us today is a good representation of what art is about. The youth that participated have woven their stories into this sculpture. This piece is all about the potential, the potential of this artwork to change over time, to serve the people here, to be a creative vessel for people's ideas and coming together and networking. It's not finished. Um, 
and you can see spaces where there's no rope, there's no color. Um, I would like to do more on it. But I also realize that if this piece is as successful as I hope it will be in the future, it will actually never be finished. I don't get attached as much as I used to to the actual finished product or the piece itself. It is more about the process. I'm more about the time and it seems natural that there's a time for it, you know, to, to, to be gone. At some point I won't be the main person anymore. There'll be other artists involved, there'll be youth involved, so the thing will t take different shapes that I can't even imagine. If you look at the thing and say, what is it, I don't see, you know, then it's, it's simply like you're not thinking, you're not using, you're not imagining what could be because that's the way to look at this. It's really exciting to think that I can put something out there that's only a support structure, only a framework, and then watch it evolve with ideas that are not my own. Well, we're really looking forward to the future of this as a, as really a connecting piece for us with our youth. Is overpowered but underrated. My race degraded, the people hate us, even though we made the whole nation. So you can never fade us or break us. Homie, you can try, but you can't take us. Thought you was winning, I'm sorry, you were mistaken. So let me get back to the bacon. And after that, I guess it's Asalaamu Alaikum.